Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to be comparing iOS 17.2 versus iOS 17.2.1, the latest update. And now, ever since Apple released iOS 17, there have been various reports of Wi-Fi issues, keyboard issues, battery performance issues. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at a few categories to compare iOS 17.2 versus the current 17.2.1. There's a few things I want to talk about. There's actually some interesting facts on the latest software that I wanted to share with you guys so let's go ahead and dive right into this video so for the first test i want to go ahead and do a wi-fi download speeds and upload speed test so we're going to run this of course on both devices 17.2 on the left and 17.2.1 here on the right we're going to do 17.2 first to see if there's any wi-fi performance gains or improvements with 17.2 now keep in mind apple did mention that there was a few issues with poor wi-fi performance with ios 17 and they aim to fix it or try to fix it with 17. But I'm not quite sure that they did a good job at this. We're going to test 17.2.1 to see if they finally fixed the issue with the latest software update. Now, the network here in the studio is capable of about 400 megabytes down tops and 40 megabytes upload tops. So in the download side, we have about 213 here on this iPhone running 17.2. By the way, both devices are iPhone 15 Pro Maxes. And on the upload side, we got 38 so let's go ahead and run the same test on 17.2.1. So let's go ahead and click a go here again. Keep in mind, 400 megabytes download speeds is the top speed for the network here. And 40 is the top on the upload side. So let's go ahead and see if this Wi-Fi test shows us any kind of improvement in regards to Wi-Fi download speeds or upload speeds with the latest OS. Now, as it looks right now, it looks like iOS 17.2 actually outperformed 17.2.1 slightly on the download. And it looks like on the upload side, they're close to identical here. So if we click OK here, we have the results. 17.2 download with 213 versus about 200, 199 here in 17.2.1. And the upload numbers are actually close to identical. So so in terms of Wi-Fi performance, although 17.2 had a slight increase in download speeds, I don't see any major changes with Wi-Fi performance from 17.2 versus 17.2.1. So if you continue to have Wi-Fi issues on the latest OS, I would like to hear from you in those comments down below. And please let me know which device you continue to have issues with. So for this next test, we're going to do a performance test. Let's jump into Geekbench here and let's try the CPU benchmark right there. We're going to run the test on both of these devices again 17.2 on the left 17.2.1 on the right let's see if this latest software update that apple released actually improves on performance let's go ahead and wait for the test to complete so the test is now completed and as you can see right here ios 17.2 single core score is 2939 versus 2934 so in the terms of single core score we don't see any performance gains are lost here from one software to the other but in the multi-core department as you can see right there we have 7300 on iOS 17.2 versus 7,210 on 17.2.1. So when it comes to the multi-core score performance, we see 90 points of additional performance gain on 17.2 versus the current software, 17.2.1. So if you're having any performance issues, I would like to hear from you in those comments down below. I don't think these numbers show any type of major gains, but yeah, there's slight gains in the multi-core performance. So another issue many iPhone users reported with the release of iOS 17 was keyboard issues so the keyboard would freeze would not show up when you go to type and there was just some type of delay for many users as of right now I have to say either 17.2 or 17.2.1 I haven't encountered any major keyboard issues previously on 17.1 and 17.1.1 I did encounter issues where the keyboard wouldn't populate and there was some type of feedback delay and also typing delays but on 17.2 or 17.2.1 I have to say I haven't had really many major keyboard issues that I have to report on. So if you do have keyboard issues, I would like to hear from you in those comments down below. But again, keyboard somewhat resolved on 17.2 and 17.2.1. The performance is still good, at least good enough that I haven't noticed any major issues. And then I want to talk about the battery because here's where I found the most interesting results from iOS 17.2 versus 17.2.1. So in terms of battery, let's go ahead and 
take a look at those numbers here in settings. Let's head on over to the battery categories right here. And we ran the exact same applications for the same amount of time. And both softwares did handle the battery properly, close to even when it came to battery performance. However, there was one issue on 17.2.1 that I've noticed over the past couple of days of testing. And as you can see right here, when we go to home and lock screen, this is where iOS 17.2.1 consumed the most battery. Both of these devices started with 100% of battery life. The same apps were ran, the same music, the same podcast, and they were at sleep or standby for the same amount of time. And as you can see right here, 34% on 17.2 right now and 27% on iOS 17.2.1. Now you see these numbers here, they're about, I don't know, eight uh, percentage of a difference here, approximately, give or take. That equals to about maybe 15 to 25 minutes of extra on-screen time, believe it or not. So right now on 17.2.1, the issue appears to be when you put your device to sleep and let it sit. I noticed that 17.2.1 consumes more battery when you're not using your iPhone. And that might sound strange, but that was the results that I came into this conclusion because running the same apps, the batteries are being consumed the same, but overnight when I set both devices to sleep basically on the lock screen, I noticed that the battery drained a lot quicker on 17.2.1 when the iPhones weren't doing anything. And as you can see from the results here, as I mentioned, they started at 100%, this one's at 27, this one's at 34. So you're gonna be missing anywhere from 15 to 20 to even sometimes 25 minutes of extra on-screen time if you have an iPhone 15 Pro Max on the latest 17.2.1. Again, this was tested multiple times and for some reason, when in sleep mode or standby mode, the iPhone it just consumes more battery on the latest software. And that about brings it into this video. I wanted to share those details with you guys. iOS 17.2 versus 17.2.1. The only major complaint I have is standby mode batteries. So other than that, everything seems to be going pretty Pretty well in terms of performance, Wi-Fi, keyboard, and everything else. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.